Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to discuss the impact of the ongoing Ukraine war on commodity trading. We'll explore the opportunities that have arisen due to this conflict and how it's affecting global markets. Stay tuned, the stream is about to begin. First, please know that we are 100% anti-war and pro-Ukraine and its people. When we say the opportunity, here does not mean that we are looking to get wealthy out of people's misery. It simply means that during the wartime, shortages arise and the traders to address them could help fix the damaged supply chain and solve the shortages problem. Ukraine war began in 2014, following Russia's annexation of Crimea. Since then, the conflict has continued to escalate, with both sides experiencing significant losses. This ongoing war has had a profound impact on the global economy, particularly in the realm of commodity trading. One of the most significant effects of the Ukraine war has been on energy market. Ukraine is a major transit country for Russian natural gas exports to Europe. Also, the war has turned the European countries against Russia, whose reaction is to weaponize energy and hold Europe's gas supply as a hostage. As a result, the conflict has raised concerns about potential disruptions to gas supplies, especially for the next winter, which would lead to increase in volatility in energy prices. The most tangible and immediate outcome of this is the daily heating and energy requirements of the households. But as you know, energy crisis first and foremost damage the transportation and heavy industries, which will impact people's everyday life a bit later. The first things to go scarce in this kind of situation are electronic heating systems, especially the ones that are of the highest energy efficiency standards. The petrochemical products would experience a raise in price such as plastic containers, bottles, or anything that is made of polypropylene, polyethylene, and polystyrene and things like that. After that, any food that comes from other countries or any distance farther 1000 kilometers would experience a hype around 20% or so on in the price. As a commodity trader, you may or may not be experienced in trading oil and gas, and honestly, it is not recommended. Remember that last year, there were moments where natural gas traders had to sell their cargo 10 to 20% under their purchase fees in order to evade ship delay costs, because the ports could not unload and there was not enough storage space in Europe. As a rule of thumb, in the time of crisis, try not to approach products that the governments are in dire need of. Because they always find a way to buy it cheaper than expected. What should you do? You can start accumulating on petrochemicals. They have long shelf life and they can be stored at any sort of a storage house with a simple guard and a lock. Also electronics, especially the one with the lower energy consumptions, are very desirable. Glass containers like jars would be hot as well. Now let's see to buy which from where. If you are located in Europe, you can trade petrochemicals from Dubai as well as Turkey. But beware of the fact that the most Turkish petrochemical products are imported brands from Iran and Russia, or at least they are rebranded versions of products of Iran and Russia. So you need to check for the sanction issues before entering into a deal. If you are from Asia and Australia region, your best bet is Thailand, Japan, then India and Dubai. For electronics, regardless of your location in the world, respectively Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and China are your place to go to. They offer high quality, efficient products with reasonable prices. For glass jars, Germany, France, Italy, China and Mexico are the largest producers of it. Among these, Mexico is the closest to Americans' buyer. It is also the cheaper option for European market. For Asia, Middle East and Africa, the China is the best choice. No question about it. Germany, France and Italy are respectively the highest prices possible for this kind of product. And, you know, buying them is mainly good for rich European countries. 
Ukraine war has also had a considerable impact on agricultural markets. Ukraine is a major exporter of wheat, corn, and sunflower oil. The conflict has disrupted agricultural production and transportation, leading to supply shortages and price increases for these commodities. This has had a ripple effect on global food prices and food security. This particular matter is affecting Africa the most because regardless of whether the negotiations for safe corridor essays or not, European countries would first get their own country's share. Russia supplies its crops by land, which means Middle East and Central Asia would get Russia crops. And China also supplies the Central Asia and the Far East Asia. The remaining region is the Africa, where the governments are not capable enough to win their share through diplomacy nor force. And where, their, where the people are not financially capable to buy grains at higher prices. In such cases, the commodity trading of grains changes from normal free market into government allegations consist of very wealthy merchants. The governments negotiate and the merchants purchase. If you are not one of the government favored merchants of your country, you should try this. Aside from grains, poor countries' main sources of nutrition are biscuits, cookies, and food products with more shelf lives that can be transformed into cheap quick foods like tomato paste or etc. Remember, to make it economically acceptable, quality of the product and the quality of the packaging must not be very high. They also have to be in packs of a small portion. For example, in Africa, buyers look for tomato pastes in sachets of 70 grams, where in Middle Eastern countries, tomato paste are packed in glass jars or cans of 500 grams or 1 kilogram. Islands, Pakistan and India are also very good sources for rice, which is another substitute for wheat. The price may not be workable for Africa. For Middle Eastern and Asian countries, it is great. Ukraine has also affected metal markets. Ukraine is a significant producer of iron ore, steel, and other metals on the west side of the world. The war has disrupted mining operations and transportation infrastructure, leading to supply shortages and price fluctuations in these markets as well. Furthermore, the war also brings shortages of metals to the market. The reason is clear. The infrastructure war destroys and the weapons war uses are all made of metals. Therefore, the metal commodities are very hot right now and they continue to be for a considerable amount of time. For trading metals, Australia is one of the best sources for the raw materials like iron ores or iron pellets. You should also look in India for better deals but be careful of these scammers. China is also great at the final product market such as metal coils, tubes, bars, and so on. Copper and brace are also among the hot products because of the use of copper in shipping industry and the brace in manufacturing military shells. Keep in mind that the best mines of copper are located in Iran and Afghanistan. They are surfaced at full capacity with the high quality. So Iran and Afghanistan are the paradises for mining industry investors. By the way, we have another video on mining investment in Iran. You should watch that. The conflict in Ukraine presents several risks for commodity traders. These include price volatility, supply disruptions, and geopolitical tensions. Traders need to be aware of these risks and develop strategies to mitigate their impact on their portfolios. We would make a video on how to minimize your risk. Please subscribe and stand by. To get more insights, you should stay informed. Keep up to date with the latest news and development related to the conflict and its impact on the commodity markets. This will help you make informed decisions and adjust your trading strategies accordingly. But here are some general suggestions to help you have a perspective. If the war ends today or anytime soon, you can stay in metal market for at least 6 to 10 years. And you can stay in petrochemical markets for 5 to 7 years. If Kherson Oblast is liberated, and I mean the oblast, the province, not the city, okay, that was liberated at eight months ago, the whole region. If that was liberated, reduce your food activity. If Crimea is liberated, get out of the food market and close all your food activities. There's another possibility. If Russia could turn the situation around, which is very, very unlikely, by the way, but if Putin could occupy meaningful territories of Ukraine, I mean anything more than 50% 
of Ukraine's territory, then get into products such as semiconductors, chipsets, and other things that a conflict between China and Taiwan could cause a shortage of. Well, I guess that's it for Ukraine conflict for today. In conclusion, the Ukraine war has had a significant impact on commodity trading, presenting both risks and opportunities for traders. By monitoring geopolitical tensions and preparing for the long term, you can navigate the challenges posed by the conflict and capitalize on the opportunities it presents. Thank you for joining us today and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insightful content on the commodity trading and global markets. Until next time.